This is a 2018 Aston Martin Lagonda Taraf, officially just the Lagonda Taraf, and it is the world's most expensive luxury sedan ever. When this debuted, it had a sticker price of around $1 million, which makes this twice as expensive as a Rolls-Royce Phantom. And they only made 120 of these for the entire planet. Today, I'm going to review this one. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. If you're looking to sell a cool car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You will get the most interest and the most money for your cool car. If you're looking to buy a cool car from the modern era, Cars and Bids has an amazing selection with daily live auctions of very cool cars, check it out at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this Lagonda Taraf from O'Gara Coach here in the Los Angeles area. This is the Aston Martin dealership here in Los Angeles, but it's also Bugatti and Bentley and several other brands. O'Gara has some of the most special cars for sale in all of Southern California, and that includes this Lagonda Taraf. It is the only Taraf currently for sale anywhere in North America. Then again, of course this is the only Taraf for sale in North America because the Lagonda Taraf was never available in North America. Aston Martin created this car to be the ultimate luxury sedan, and the plan was only to sell them in the Middle East where there was a specific market demand, Aston Martin said, for such a vehicle. Eventually they added more production and sold a few in Europe and other markets, but never in North America. But it's no surprise the production run was so limited because the price tag was so enormous. Like I said, when it was new, this cost around $1 million, which made it the single most expensive luxury sedan in the world. And in fact, it still is. The most you can equip a fully optioned Rolls-Royce Phantom to is around $600,000. So this is basically two Phantoms worth of luxury sedan. Under the hood is a V12, 6 liters, makes about 530 horsepower, and the platform is the same one from the Aston Martin DB9. So what makes this car cost a million dollars? Why is it called the Lagonda Taraf, and how is it here? Today, I'm going to answer those questions and review this car. First, I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of the ultimate luxury sedan. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Lagonda Taraf with probably its best feature, and that would be the fact that it is beautiful. And I mean truly gorgeous, breathtakingly beautiful. Frankly, I believe this is the best looking four-door car I have ever seen. I've previously said that about the E38 BMW 7 Series, but now spending some time with this car, I can see that I was terribly mistaken. This really is an intensely beautiful car. Gorgeous lines flowing down the body, the steeply raked windshield. I actually stumbled across one of these street parked in London last summer, and I spent minutes looking at it. Today, I've spent many more minutes, and I think it's Fabulous, truly amazing. The rear end styling is probably the best part. These gorgeous lines that come to the back and give it like a concept car look in back. But this is no concept car. You can drive it around 
if you have a million dollars. But anyway, now that we've covered this car's sheer beauty, let's talk through some interesting exterior quirks, starting with the door handle. You can see they're flat up against the body. To get in, the same with other Aston Martins from this era, you press the front part of the handle, the back part pops out, and you can pull it open. Pretty simple. Another interesting thing in this vicinity is the glass on the side of the car. You can see there's a front window and a back window, but then there's glass in between them. That's because Aston Martin didn't want to put some plastic panel here, like basically every other car, it wouldn't look as luxurious. They wanted to keep the glass going down the whole side of the Taraf, and so there's this non-moving glass panel in the middle between the two pieces of glass. That is pretty cool. And next up, another touch worth mentioning here on the side, you can see this car has one of these front fender gills, as a lot of cars from this era did, and an aluminum piece sticks out. That contains the turn signal on the side of the car. A lot of automakers integrated into the mirrors, but in this car, it's on the silver front fender gill piece. Kind of interesting. More interesting though than the turn signal on the side of this car is the one in back. All right, when you turn on the headlights, the tail lights light up in back and you can see there are these individual horizontal lights. Looks pretty cool back here. Very distinctive, different from other Aston Martin models. But it gets even cooler when you turn on the turn signal. Take a look, the lower part lights up in orange and you can see the red tail lights switch color to orange for each flash of the turn signal. But just on the lower half of this tail light assembly, again, a very distinctive, very cool look that speaks to the luxury of this car. And next up, we move up front in the Taraf, where there are a few interesting items worth pointing out, starting with the grill. You can see this is a very distinctively shaped grill, very special, very noticeable, and very different from regular Aston Martin models. For instance, take a look at the DB9 grill. You can see a different shape. It fits differently with the headlights, very different from what you get in the Taraf, where you have this sort of headlight flowing into grill and just an overall different design. They wanted to make sure this car was very distinctive from standard Aston Martin models. Now up here, the headlights are not particularly distinctive or notable, but the turn signals are worth mentioning. Right now, you can see the headlights are on and the running lights are on in this car. But if you put on the turn signal, you can see it takes the place of one of the running lights, whichever side you've put on, blinking orange, instead of the running light being there. Again, a distinctive look for the front of this car and distinctive of other Aston Martin models at the time, which typically had larger turn signals that would kind of run up the front fender above the headlights. And finally, we move on to probably the most important thing up front, and that would be the badge on the hood. From your angle, it probably looks like an Aston Martin badge, but look a little closer, it's a Lagonda badge, different, distinct from the Aston Martin badge. And in fact, this isn't technically an Aston Martin. It's supposed to be called just the Lagonda Taraf, with Lagonda being the brand and Taraf being the model, like Ford Taurus Lagonda Taraf. So what is a Lagonda, you might be wondering? Well, this is Aston Martin's luxury brand. They've owned it since the 40s, and there have been various Lagonda models over the years. In fact, I reviewed the old school 70s, 80s Lagonda at one point, and it is one of my all-time favorite videos I've ever filmed because the car is so bizarre and quirky. After that car went away in the early 90s, the Lagonda brand went away too, but Aston Martin resurrected it for this car to celebrate the 100th the birthday of Aston Martin, because nothing says 100 years of Aston Martin like a car from a different brand. <laughs> anyway, that's the story behind Lagonda. As for Taraf, it means ultimate luxury in Arabic. Initially, the plan was only to sell these cars in the Middle East, where that name would make more sense, but eventually they decided to sell a few more units globally, and that's what it's called. And next up, we move on to climbing into the Taraf. A couple of interesting things happen when you open the door. For one thing, the window rolls down. A lot of cars do this to make sure the window seals with the car, but in this case, it rolls down quite a bit, several inches in front, and it's the same thing in the rear. Open the door, the window rolls down several inches. The Aston Martin Rapide sedan also did this, but you don't typically see it that often. Now, of course, when you close the door, the window rolls right back up and forms that seal against the body so water doesn't get in. Now, the other interesting thing that happens when you open the doors is that they open up. 
Aston Martin has swan hinged doors, so they say, and they open a little more upwards than regular doors, both to look cool and to help you clear any curbs so the door doesn't scrape. And you can see the look of those swan hinged doors from the front. Again, very distinctive, very Aston Martin. But to me, the doors have an even cooler trick than that. Check this out. You know how when you park on a hill, you open the door and then it tries to close again because of gravity, or you park right next to a car and you wanna open your door just far enough to get out, but the door won't stay put in that spot? Well, the Taroff's doors will. Take a look at this. You open the door and you can place it precisely where you want, and it will stay exactly there no matter where you put it, no matter how far you open it. I think this is the coolest trick. And it's all thanks to this little hydraulic at the bottom of the door. You can see it there. That is what keeps the door precisely where you want to put it. It is a very nice feature and very luxurious. A nice piece of attention to detail from the Tara. I'm gonna start in back because this is an ultra luxury car, so this seems like the right place to be. The first thing you notice when you climb back here is there's a lot of space. I recently reviewed the Rapide and it was tight in back. This isn't. You can see I can pretty much just spread out. There's a lot of room in the back of the Taraf. Very different vehicle. That's partially because this is a foot and a half longer than a Rapide. And it appears a lot of that extra length was stuck in the back seat for more comfort. And it isn't just leg room that's impressive back here, it's also headroom. I have a lot of room for my head. When I sit back, I have at least an inch or maybe more until the ceiling. One reason for that is the ceiling actually curves up for better rear seat headroom. You can see in the front it's one height and then it moves higher in the back so that rear passengers have more headroom back here so they can be more comfortable, which is a nice luxury touch you'd expect on a million dollar sedan. And next up, speaking of the ceiling. In some cars you have just a fabric headliner, other cars have a slightly nicer material, but this takes things to a whole new level. The headliner is leather, and not just leather, but hand-stitched leather with this beautiful pattern all the way from the front to the back, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Again, this isn't something you're going to touch or really look at very frequently, it's just the ceiling but they made it beautiful. And that beauty and luxury translates to several other places throughout the back of this car. For one thing, take a look at the B pillar. You have this contraption here. This is a handle designed to help you get out of the car. You put your hands on it, pull, and then you can lift yourself up and get out. Of course, beautifully finished in leather and aluminum. And when you're not using it, you can put it right up against the B pillar and it is magnetized so it will stay in place and stay out of the way and not dangle around and make noise. Pretty luxurious. And next up, speaking of luxury, this little piece between the seats is just an armrest. You can fold it down, and when you have it folded down, you can see between the backrest, there's a little compartment. Open that up, and it's for drinks, or more specifically, bottles. And you can cool it. Press this button, and it turns on the refrigerator in this compartment, and that way you can keep your bottles cool to save them for later, or make sure they're chilled when you arrive wherever you're going. A nice touch and a very expensive car. And next up, another luxury touch back here is the detail work on the seats, not just the stitching, which looks nice, but take a look at this pattern down the center, these circles and then little dots between them. Very, very beautiful, better than your typical leather and stitching, which is already pretty beautiful. And this is a gorgeous pattern that's repeated in various places throughout the car. It looks really cool. But that's not the only impressive leather detail. How about the fact that the seat belt buckles are covered in leather? as well, and they also have contrast stitching on them, which is really impressive. These belt buckles have to be kind of a crappy plastic to comply with regulation, so Aston Martin wraps them to hide the crappiness so everything looks beautiful back here. Pretty nice. And by the way, if you want to spend a million dollars on a Laganda Taraf so you can use it as a family car with children, you will be happy to know there are some benefits back here for kids. For one thing, you have child seat anchors back here and one of them is behind this aluminum look panel this beautiful panel you can pop it off and that's where a child seat anchor goes that is probably the nicest looking child seat anchor hider that I've ever seen of course you can also see on the backs of the front seats you have iPads mounted here obviously these iPads aren't 
Aston Martin iPads, but this car does offer this little clip behind the front seats so you can attach an iPad, a tablet, so your kids in the back won't be bored while you're driving along. A nice touch. And another kid-friendly item back here in the center console that folds down, you open it up and you can see there are two different USB ports, so you can charge those iPads if you want to or any other device your kid might be using while you drive them along in million dollar luxury. And speaking of the center, next up we move on to the center control area, which interestingly is pretty much identical to what you'll find in the Rapide. Basically everything in here is exactly what you'll find in the back of the Rapide, right down to these fixed climate vents that are raised up and pointing at the rear seat passengers, and the strange heated seat adjustment where you press the heated seat button and then twist this little dial to turn on the seat and then press the button again to switch to the other seat and turn the dial to turn on that seat. And it's very strange, but I guess it works. And you have the Rapide's strange temperature adjustment back here for the climate control, where you can press mode to pop up a thermometer and then move the dial to adjust the temperature, but it doesn't actually tell you what temperature you've selected, just that it's higher or lower on the thermometer. Again, very strange. But all of this stuff is directly lifted out of the Rapide. Now, this shouldn't come as that big of a surprise. Only a 120 car production run, they're not going to make totally new switches and buttons and control panels, but I have to say, if you spent a million bucks on a Laganda, then you got into Rapide and couldn't really tell the difference in back, you might be a little disappointed. So to an extent, I am surprised to see exactly the same in this little area. And next up, we move on to the front of the Turaf, where we notice more Rapide stuff, actually, just like in back. The steering wheel is basically the Rapide steering wheel and the same wheel used in other Aston Martin models at the time, except the middle says Laganda instead of Aston Martin. In the vicinity of the steering wheel, you have the turn signal stock, the famous Ford Focus turn signal stock, literally used on Ford models because Ford owned Aston Martin when that signal stock first went in. That is even carried into the million dollar Taraf. And sharing those pieces with the Rapide and other Aston Martin models from this era also means sharing the navigation system, which is a Garmin navigation system just adapted for use in Aston Martin. I also complained about this in my Rapide review, and here it is again, except now this car costs a million dollars. Crazy to see navigation like that in a car like this, but it's just what Aston Martin had at the time. It's all they had, and so that's what this car has too. Definitely not fitting the beauty, the luxury of the Laganda Taraf. With that said, there are some pretty cool things in here, some nice luxury touches that go with this car, like the key, for example. You can see this is the key, this rectangle that has this glass brick at the end. You look in the brick and there's the Laganda logo. Now, check this out. To start the car, you place the key inside this little slot in the middle that also has the Laganda logo. You push the key in, it pushes down that Laganda logo, but then it's replaced by the keys Laganda logo, so you always have that in there, regardless of whether or not your key is in the center and the car is on. That's pretty cool, the Laganda logo always looking at you from the engine starter button. Another thing I like in this vicinity is the push button transmission. I like PRND buttons right there. It helps free up some space in the center console where a traditional gear lever would be. And next up, another luxury touch in this car. It has a nice Bang and Olufsen sound system, and when you first turn on the car, you can see the speakers rise up from the dashboard and then they stay in that position and provide you with a music experience. They do this on the passenger side and over on the driver's side. You can see rising up when the car starts and when the stereo is on. You turn off the car and the speakers retreat back down so that they're more flush with the dashboard until you start it again and they pop back up. That is a pretty cool touch. And next up, another cool touch in this car is on the gauge cluster. That would be the tachometer 
which revs the wrong direction. This is an Aston Martin Hallmark. The tachometer and speedometer are opposites, and it is a neat look and very distinctive for Aston Martin. The gauge cluster, by the way, is also beautiful, a nice looking piece, gorgeous in there, and you can see the speedometer is in kilometers per hour. That's because, like I mentioned, the Taroth was never sold new in North America, so this one got a kilometer per hour speedometer when it was sold new. And that may make you wonder, what exactly is this doing here? <laughs> Well, the Taroth is legal to import to North America under the show or display law, which allows certain very special cars to be imported if it's in like the public interest to see them in shows or displays, and you can import your Taroth for that reason. And this one has been legally imported and titled here in North America, and the EPA signed off on it. It even gave this car its own individual EPA fuel economy rating, and so that's how how the Taroth made it to North America. Makes sense. But anyway, back to the beauty of this car. I want to go back to the stitching. Again, in front, gorgeous stitching on the seats, and this gorgeous circle pattern down the center of the seats really looks beautiful. You also have that gorgeous circle pattern in the center console. Again, looks great. Rimmed by stitching. Everything just looks beautiful in here. You also have the Lagonda logo stitched into the seats. Again, not Aston Martin. They're very particular about this. Lagonda. You won't really find any Aston Martin logos anywhere on this car, at least not on display. Further driving that point home, in the center console, you can see this little silver circle. This is an ashtray that comes with this car. You pop it open, put your ashes in it, you can empty it out, pretty simple. The cool part is it says Lagonda on the top, not Aston Martin. There are probably not too many of these, maybe one made for each Taroth. This is a pretty cool accessory. Now, interestingly, in the vicinity of this ashtray, there are a few buttons in here, which are kind of odd. One is the lock unlock button. That's it. Just this tiny little small horizontal button. You press it to lock and unlock your doors. Not very large and very out of the way for a lock unlock button, but that's where it is. You also here have the button to pop your trunk. This little button with a car, the trunk open, press that, and that's how you open the trunk in the Taroth. And with the trunk open, a couple of interesting items in here. For one thing, it is a very small trunk. For such a large car, you don't really have all that much cargo space in here. And if you look into the trunk, you can clearly see the bottle chiller refrigerator intrudes on the trunk space quite a bit. And if you throw something back there, it could maybe damage that piece, which is just kind of sticking out. So you want to make sure to remember that's there when you're putting stuff in your Taroth trunk. But the trunk is fairly small, even aside from that, it's just not a very large cargo area. It does, however, contain an umbrella. As all new Aston Martins do, an umbrella included with the car, it is very rainy in the UK after all. The cool thing with this umbrella is it's not an Aston Martin umbrella, but it says Lagonda on it. It is a special Lagonda umbrella for the Lagonda Taroth. That's pretty cool. And finally, the last interesting thing in this area is how the trunk closes. You can just slam it down, but you don't have to. It is a soft closed trunk. You can just get it near to where it will latch, and then it will latch automatically so you're not slamming anything because that is not a luxurious, beautiful thing to do. And next up, speaking of things that open on this car, let's talk fuel door, which is on this like horizontal panel and it opens up like this. This is one of the most beautiful spots in the whole car. To open up the fuel door, you press this little button in the driver's footwell, you push that, and then the fuel door pops open like this. The interesting thing here is you can see it is a capless fuel system, so there's no cap you unscrew, you just stick the pump in, pump your fuel, and then close it and drive off in your million dollar beauty. And finally, we move under the hood, and you can see this car's engine, the 6-liter V12. Like I mentioned, about 530 horsepower. Now, interestingly, the engine says Aston Martin on it, not Lagonda. This is the only place the Aston Martin logo really appears prominently in the entire car, under the hood, letting you know who built the engine. Although, it is worth noting that on the little plaque that tells you who was the final inspector for this car, that has a Lagonda 
Honda badge on it, not Aston Martin. So it was really just the engine that they kept the Aston Martin on. Now, as for this car's performance, like I mentioned, it's about a foot and a half longer than a Rapide, which is a huge figure, but it weighs about the same, right around 4,300 pounds. Pretty heavy, but no heavier than the Rapide, despite its larger size. 530 horsepower V12 in a car this size, zero to 60 was around 4.4 seconds, and a top speed of around 195 miles per hour. So even though this was the ultimate luxury sedan, it could certainly still perform. And so those are the quirks and features of the Laganda Taraf. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Taraf. I have always wanted to drive this car, just to be around this car. It is just such a gorgeously beautiful automobile, just truly spectacularly beautiful. And I've learned two things today from spending the day with this car. Um, one is that it's even more beautiful than I thought. I'm not kidding. This is a really gorgeous car. <laughs> It's, it's quite impressive to, to behold this thing in public. Um, it looks very different from just about anything else and it's really cool. The other thing though that I think is worth mentioning, you're not paying for, when I heard about the Taraf, I assumed it would have all sorts of crazy equipment and stuff and features and be like a phantom on steroids. The truth is, it's got a lot of Rapide and a lot of DB9 in here. At the end of the day, it's become clear to me, you're not paying for the luxury quite as much as you're paying for the rarity and the styling. You will not encounter another sedan this beautiful. You will not encounter another one of these, maybe in your whole country, no matter where you live. Um, and having something that unique and that special is in itself pretty special and pretty cool. And I think that's what people are paying for when they buy this car. The engine is the same as a Rapide. The switch gear is basically right out of a DB9. That stuff is fairly similar. It is a little bigger in back. You have the drink cooler, that sort of thing. There are some benefits, but not a million dollars worth. The million dollars comes in this car's rarity and its you know value and the fact that there's not gonna be another one and the fact that it'll probably hold its value pretty well because you're never gonna see another one of these on the road. The handling is fine. It handles about like a Rapide does, um, but which is to say not especially quick. Uh, that's not really what it's for. The steering and handling, it's not incredibly fast, but this is ultimately a luxury car and that's not really the purpose. I will say the gear changes are better than I expected. You'd think with an old single clutch transmission like this, it would be slow, it'd be annoying. Um, it's not really, it's actually reasonably comfortable and acceptable in terms of the world of gear changing. It feels soft, I would say, as I have the car in sport mode right now, even in sport mode, it feels pretty soft, but not very high performance -y, but comfortable gear changes. It's not like it slams you around like an old Maserati. The interior of this car is a little bit nicer than what you get uh, in a Rapide or a DB9, just generally speaking in here, better stitching. Everything is just a little bit more luxurious and higher quality. Um, stitching on the seats, the patterns, the seat, the seat ceiling, the sun visors, everything is just a little bit nicer. But really, you're paying a million dollars. It's like those one-off Ferraris that they're doing for very rich people, like the Eric Clapton one. You're paying for the rarity, the specialness, the fact that no one else has one. A Rapide is a pretty similar car for about, when it was new, about a fifth of the money. But Rapides are around. You see them occasionally. They're now 50 grand used cars. This will never be that. This will always be a car owned by someone with exquisite taste, one of the most special, most beautiful cars Aston Martin has ever produced. And I really think probably the most beautiful four-door car of all time. And so that's the Aston Martin Laganda Taraf. Technically, just the Laganda Taraf. This is an impressive car with beautiful styling and unbelievable rarity. And it's the world's most expensive sedan. Is it worth a million bucks? Well, you don't exactly have a million bucks to spend, now do you? But if you did, maybe you would want this car so you could pull up at a stoplight with a Rolls Royce Phantom and sneer at the commoner next to you as you drive off laughing. <laughs> Anyway, now it's time to give the Taraf a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, I'm doing it, this gets a 10 out of 10. I've never given a 10 to a sedan before, but I really think if anything deserves it, it's this. This is the most beautiful sedan ever made. 
Acceleration 0 to 60 is 4.4 seconds and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is fine, it's a big car, so it's no sports car and it gets a 6 out of 10. Fun factor is fine, this is more about luxury and prestige than fun, but it's still fast and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is also huge, except for the fact that not everyone knows what it is. It gets a 9 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 38 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. It's a bit behind with no adaptive cruise and that Garmin navigation and other drawbacks, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Comfort is good, better than the Rapide, especially in back, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is great, again better than the Rapide, with more attention paid to luxury. Still, Aston reliability is a bit worrisome, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for a car like this, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is a tough one. You can have the same engine and performance and many interior pieces in a Rapide for literally a tenth of the money. But people who buy this want exclusivity, and boy does the Laganda offer it. Still, it's huge money, and it gets a 4 4 out of 10 for a total daily score of 28 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 66 out of 100, which places the Laganda here against other ultra luxury sedans. This isn't the best luxury sedan in terms of performance or luxury, but it's the most beautiful, the most exclusive, and the most head turning, period. And for 120 Laganda Taraf owners out there, nothing else will do.